What is Polkadot and why does it exist? What's its purpose? What's its competition? How does it compete? And what does it bring to the table that other blockchains already don't? To understand the contents of this video, you will, ba you will need only a basic familiarity with the term blockchain. If you're not familiar with that term, there's a link below in the description which will take you to an illustrated explainer that can be understood by virtually anyone. Now let's find out what Polkadot is. Here's how Polkadot works. Polkadot has a main substrate-based blockchain called the Relay Chain. Then other blockchains can connect to this Relay Chain and we call those parachains. If you're not clear on what uh, substrate-based means, I have another video that I'll link below that explains that in under 5 minutes. The connected chains, these parachains, they produce blocks as however they see fit. So for example, the Bitcoin blockchain has its own block production mechanism. The Ethereum blockchain has its own production mechanism, block production mechanism. They are completely different and completely unrelated. But from Polkadot, what they can get is finality. And finality is the, um, let's say, certainty that a block will not be reverted. Now, for the curious, a block can be reverted when a hard fork occurs. During a hard fork, some clients, some nodes, some uh, software programs running the blockchain will, run, uh, will keep running using their own rules. And others will perhaps upgrade to a newer version and use that version as, as rules to build the blockchain. These forks will diverge, in, but they will have a common ancestor. Now, in some very, very rare cases, it can happen that the fork that was deemed dead before can spring back to life if, for example, it had more hash power than the original chain, and then this fork would take over. It would basically overwrite the canonical chain up until that point. This means that all the blocks on the canonical chain up until that point would basically be reverted along with all the transactions within them. Now, Polkadot itself is not a blockchain that wants to compete with any of the existing blockchains. It doesn't even have smart contracts. Instead, it wants to be a platform through which all of these other um, isolated blockchains can communicate with each other. Essentially, Polkadot seeks to unify the fragmented blockchain ecosystem at large. Polkadot also offers something we call cross-chain composability. Bitcoin is one blockchain, Ethereum is another blockchain. They are completely unrelated and fundamentally different, and value that is locked in Bitcoin cannot be easily moved to Ethereum without a centralized intermediary to which you will dedicate, to which you would give your Bitcoin for safekeeping while you play with a mirror version of Bitcoin on Ethereum in the form of some token. Now, uh, you may be wondering why would you want to move Bitcoin to Ethereum in the first place? Well, uh, Bitcoin is kind of technologically stagnant and it doesn't really have any programmability built in. So on Bitcoin, all your money can do is sit tight. But on Ethereum, there's a vibrant DeFi, decentralized finance ecosystem, where you can take loans, give out loans, where you can put your money to work by investing in synthetic assets, or even bet on the price of Ether using Bitcoin without losing your exposure to Bitcoin itself. So these are all interesting things, interesting use cases you can do on Ethereum that are not possible on Bitcoin and that a lot of people who have Bitcoin would perhaps be interested in. So Polkadot allows completely different blockchains to talk to each other through Polkadot. So it allows you to compose cross-chain applications. Now, if we, if we consider uh, the ability to send messages from one chain to the other, and if we consider a message to be either a financial transaction or just hello, a chat message, or even some web content, then we can uh, realize that we can apply this solution to our Bitcoin on Ethereum problem from before. Now, I made an illustrated guide about this particular example in another video, which is linked below or here, so check that out if you're interested. For now, let's talk about shared security. The relay chain is a blockchain. It's a substrate-based blockchain, and it is secured, or mined, for lack of a more familiar word, by validators, by, by entities we call validators. Validators run Polkadot nodes or Polkadot software that builds these blocks and they're occasionally given the right to produce a new block. They're rewarded for doing this good work. If you're not sure what substrate-based means, 
Uh, I have another video that explains that right here and in the description below, so you can check that out if you're interested. Anyone can become such a validator if they have enough stake behind them. Now, stake is the economic equivalent of the native currency of the chain that we are talking about. In the case of Polkadot, that'll be the DOT tokens. If a validator has enough DOT tokens backing them, then they can become a validator because the top some number, top few hundred of validators backed, ordered by stake, are selected to be the active validators of that current set. I should note that validators aren't just rewarded, they can also be punished. If they are, for example, expected to do some work and they don't show up, so they're offline, they will get punished by the system. Their money, their stake, will get confiscated by the blockchain itself. So a subset of these validators on the relay chain is randomly assigned in an unpredictable way to a parachain of choice. So these parachains and these validators will rotate an assignment between each other. Then, once in a period of every six seconds, a parachain that's connected to the relay chain will submit a block candidate to the relay chain for validation. Validators will check out that block candidate, and if it checks out, if it's fine, then they will include it in the main relay chain. The parachain has thus gained finality from the relay chain itself, and it can continue producing blocks on its own. So a parachain is producing its own blocks in its own way, but it gets finality from the relay chain itself. That's where it gets its security. Every parachain depends on this relay chain for the ultimate seal of approval, and the more validators there are in the systems, the more parachains can exist, and vice versa, and the more stake will be locked in the system, and the more secure the system will become, economically speaking. Because remember, to be a validator you need the stake, and the stake is locked or bonded in the system when you are doing your validation duties. For as long as you're a validator, your stake is bonded, locked in the system itself. And in this way, all the parachains share the security that the relay chain provides and every parachain is as secure as the entire system itself, is as attack resistant as the entire system itself. Finally, let's discuss Polkadot's governance and forkless upgrade ability. Now, typically in traditional blockchains, to do an upgrade of the chain, to add new features into it, you would have to do a hard fork. The hard fork um, includes getting in touch with people who are running your nodes, your blockchain software, and getting them to upgrade this software so that your blockchain can get new features. Now, if you're not able to get in touch with all of them, or if some of them just are late to the party, they will get stuck on a fork that is outdated and their software will not be in sync with yours. Of course, after they upgrade their software, it will come back in sync and it'll work again, which is all good, but it's an arduous process and it can sometimes go wrong and the fork can live on for longer than intended. Now, forks happen all the time in blockchains. They usually die out quickly, but sometimes they can become a problem and managing them is also very difficult. So Polkadot has this unique method of every that sh it shares with every substrate based chain and that's that it has this uh, runtime logic that the, the logic that tells it how to build blocks is stored on the chain itself and if it reads that logic from the chain itself then it knows how to build blocks i have explained this in a separate video linked here and in the description below but what it comes down to is you can actually have everybody who owns the tokens of the blockchain in this case dot for polkadot vote on the chain of the change uh, of the change of the chain itself so that the chain changes while it's still running and this way all the nodes that are running it they will load the new code from the chain itself and you don't need to upgrade your software at all the software upgrades itself by reading from the chain this is how forkless upgrades are accomplished and i go into a little bit more detail in this video that i'm linking here and below in the description check it out now, for a very detailed breakdown of on-chain governance, which is required to execute these code upgrades off the chain, please see the wiki, which I'm linking here and in the description below. We have a very extensive write-up on the wiki, on the Polkadot wiki, on governance and all things related to uh, dot holder voting. So you can you can brush up on that there. And that's all that Polkadot is. So to sum up. Polkadot is a system that allows different, completely different blockchains to talk to each other and allows developers to compose cross-chain applications while sharing the security of all the other applications in the system.
that's all there is to it.